Um, let me welcome everyone to the first meeting of the Rural Economy and Connectivity Committee and I take this opportunity to remind everybody to turn off mobile phones as they can interfere with the sound system. It is uh, permitted to use uh, computers uh, and similar devices. We've received no apologies uh, today. Uh, the first uh, agenda item is declaration of interests and that is to allow committee members to declare any interests they have that are relevant to the work of the committee. Uh, you've been provided with background information uh, in a note from the clerk on this issue. Uh, let me start off by uh, firstly declaring that I jointly own a registered agricultural holding of under two hectares uh, from which I derive absolutely no income. I'll now go round the table in turn, starting with the convener and then deputy convener, asking each of you in turn to uh, declare relevant interests. Edward. I have an interest in a farming partnership with an ancillary uh, residential property letting business. I also have an interest in a rod and line fishery on the River Spey. Full details are disclosed in the register. Thank you. Gail. Thank you, Stuart. I am a member of the Scottish Rural Parliament and I'm also a member of the Board of Directors of North Highland College. Rhoda. Um, I am um, Vice Convener of the um, Friends of the North Highland Line. I'm a co-op party member and Unison member as well, which might have some bearing at some point, but I don't think they have a huge bearing on the work of the committee. Mike. I have no registrable interest to declare. John. Uh, I have nothing I have to declare. Uh, on a voluntary basis, I would say that I'm a chartered accountant and a member of ICAS. Richard. Uh, I wish to register that uh, I visited Taiwan last year, paid for by the Taiwanese government. I'm the honorary president of Orbison Bowling Club, an honorary member of the Showman's Guild. Yesterday, I had to register a badge which I have received from Scottish Racing, which entitles me to enter any race course in Scotland. That badge is worth between one thousand and one and a half thousand pounds. Lucky you, Chairman. Uh, I have no formal uh, declaration. Uh, however, I did voluntary register uh, and, uh, and participation in an internet business uh, owning domains. And I do have a strong background in the connectivity area. Emma. I have no financial register of interest. It might be something that comes up in the future is that I'm a partner in a bed and breakfast, which is part of the tourism industry in Dumfries and Galloway. John. Uh, I have an extensive list on the register, but none are relevant to this committee, I would say. Convener. Thank you. Peter. I'm a partner in the farming business, P. Chapman & Co. I'm also a, a, a director of a wind turbine business, uh, Red Bog Renewables. Uh, I am a member of NFUS, I am a director of the ANM group, Alvin Marine and Northern March group, and everything is declared in the, in the register of interests. Uh, thank you very much, uh, colleagues, uh, and of course you will need to make declarations at the appropriate point in future meetings when things come up. We now move to agenda item two, which is the choice of convener. Uh, the procedure has been explained in the uh, paper two that has been provided to members. Uh, the Parliament has agreed that only members of the Scottish Conservative and Unionist Party are eligible for nomination as convener of this committee. And I invite Peter Chapman to nominate uh, a member for the convenership. Thank you, Stuart. I have the great delight in, in nominating Edward Mountain for this position. I know Edward will be an excellent chair of this committee and I have no problem in uh, putting his name forward. Are there any other nominations for the position? Are we agreed then that Edward Mountain is our convener? Agreed. agreed. We are agreed. Thank you and congratulations, Edward. I will now swap desks with Edward so he can convene the rest of our meeting. Thank you. Thank you. First of all, I, I'd like to thank you all uh, for uh, making me convener of this committee, and I look forward to working with you all closely over the, over the term of this parliament. Uh, the committee's next task, I understand, is to choose a deputy convener, and the Parliament has agreed that only members of the Scottish National Party are eligible for nomination as deputy convener. And I believe that John 
Mason has uh, proposed that Gail Ross is to be convener, uh, deputy convener. Is, is, is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Okay. Do we all agree that Gail Ross should be our deputy convener? Agreed. Agreed. Good. I'd like to congratulate Gail uh, on her appointment. And uh, again, I look forward to working with you closely over the course of uh, this committee. Now, the fourth item on this agenda is the consideration of a negative instrument, and that's the Common Agricultural Policy Direct Payments Scotland Amendment Number 2 Regulation 2016. Paper 3 that we've had as a committee summarised the purposes of that instrument, which is to extend the deadline in Scotland in which farmers can apply to the Common Agricultural Policy uh, Subsidies 2016. I should also advise members that the instrument was considered yesterday by the Delegated Powers and Law Reform Committee. In its report, that committee draws to the attention of the Parliament uh, that the instrument had come into force on the 18th of May, the day after it was laid in the Scottish Parliament, and that this breached uh, the required 28-day period between laying of an instrument and it coming into force. However, the DPLR committee found the failure to comply with the requirement to be acceptable in the circumstances. The reason for doing so are outlined, in the minister, outlined by the Minister for Parliamentary Business in his letter to the presiding officer, which you've seen dated the 17th of May, which is at Annex A to the paper three that you received. The committee will now consider any issues that it wishes to raise in reporting to the parliament this uh, instrument. Members that should note there have been no motions to annul uh, have been received in relation to the instrument. Do members have any comments in relation to the instrument? Yes. Uh, just, just simply in relation to the 28 days, I think uh, it's always slightly uncomfortable when a, 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 a piece of secondary legislation has to be uh, tabled and come into operation almost at once, but I think in the circumstances that the government uh, found itself in, it was necessary in these circumstances, and just as the DPLR uh, has indicated that it accepts there were good reasons for it, I think we might similarly find uh, that that is the case also. Yes, Peter. I'd just, just like to say, uh, Chairman, that uh, we don't like, we want to see this statutory instrument run on and on. We, we, it, needs to, it needs to come to conclusion and, uh, and uh, we, we know where we are. I, I think that I'll, I'll, I'll take that, but I think that actually we're discussing the, the instrument and we can come on to maybe how, how it works later. Mm. But thank you for that comment. So are there any other comments? So is, is, is the committee agreed that it does not wish to make any recommendations in relation to the instrument? Okay. Uh, the final item then, uh, agenda item five, is in consideration of the approach to be taken to the development of the committee's work programme. Members will see from the papers provided that it's proposed we invite Fergus Ewing, the Cabinet Secretary for Rural Economy and Connectivity, to give evidence uh, on the issues relevant to his portfolio and the committee as remit on the 29th of June. And we have had an informal briefing from SPICE in advance of that meeting. I'd also uh, like to add that it appears that responsibility for certain major transport projects, such as the fourth replacement crossing, will be the responsibility of Keith Brown, the Cabinet Secretary for the Economy, Jobs and Fair Work, as opposed to Mr Ewing. Given the recent announcement that the completion of the fourth replacement crossing is to be, uh, to be delayed, the committee may therefore wish to consider inviting Keith Brown to give evidence on the 29th of June as well. Uh, can, uh, I'd also, at this stage, say it's also proposed that we hold a business planning meeting towards the end of the summer recess to allow detailed discussion of our approach of priorities and work programme. To help inform this approach, I would like to hold a brief discussion with members on the 29th of June, after we've had, given ev had evidence taken from the Cabinet Secretaries, to obtain their individual views on areas of work which they would like to be pursued by the committee. Can I invite comments on these proposals? Yes, John. 
you, Convener. I, I don't think there's any point in us wasting Mr Brown's time. We heard a statement from him recently. Um, I think we were assured there'd be updates, but apart from that, I, 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 the plan of, a, of approach, I think, is appropriate. Uh, yeah. Right. Can, can I maybe disagree with that? I think it's one of the biggest infrastructure projects going on. If we're going to have responsibility for transport, I think we need to start the way we mean to go on and I, at least you know, get an update ahead of the summer recess. There'll be two months when no questions can be asked on this at all. So I think it would be a good idea to have them there. So, uh, I'm relatively neutral on the, on the subject of the bridge, which will still be delivered a month ahead of the planned schedule. Uh, but if members wish to hear from Keith Brown. Um, more fundamentally, I'd like to support the approach in developing a work programme that you're proposing. Uh, I think that makes sense. I, I would urge uh, uh, that the clerks communicate with us all individually about the date that we might have for our day, uh, because uh, speaking personally, um, the diary's filling up. Um, I've got two away days in the last week before we come back and I suspect that's probably the week we're looking at and, we're, and I want to be alone looking around the table in that regard. So I think it's important that even though we don't know what we're going to do. Uh, but what I might like to suggest um, that, that we consider, not necessarily decide today, um, linking it to an, a visit that's relevant to the business of the committee. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not this is not meant to be an exhaustive list or even a list of suggestions. A visit to a farm, a visit to um, a rural business, there are quite a range of options. I have no fixed views in the matter. But I think if we're going to spend a day you know, sitting in a darkened room, it might be lightened to some extent if we actually touch the real world as well, if we can. Um, can, can I just say that I, I absolutely share that opinion, and I share the opinion that we need to get it in the diary sooner than, rather than later. And I also share the opinion that we need to make sure that it's an equitable travel distance for all of us to make sure it's relatively easy, but, but to, see it, to see an item that would be int of interest to us all would be very useful, I think. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Mike. Thank you, Convener. Um, I agree with Rhoda. I would like to see that Keith Brown comes to the committee. I think it's an important issue. It's the biggest transport project that we face in Scotland. And there are lots of questions we need to ask them. I look, I've, still, I've got lots of questions I'd like to ask them, certainly. And um, I just think from a personal point of view, as I agree with Stuart. I mean, I'm, I've booked my holidays for the last 10 days of August, so I won't, won't be around for that. Excellent. So there we are. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Let's see how you mean to go on. And see it. <laughs> I think that was excellent. You were telling us in advance, yeah. nothing else. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> uh, thanks, Convener. Um, I mean, I think it's important that we have all of our ideas probably as well as what the ministers might say, and presumably we can ask the ministers anything we want. But uh, I, I guess rather than us starting to raise ideas today, we'll do that in a fortnight's time if we have. Is that, is that what you want us to do? Well, my, um, my, my idea was to spend some time uh, with the clerks, with each of you, to find out uh, what, you, what issues that you would like to raise, so I'm fully aware of them, right. um, and then to make that known to the rest of the committee as well. That's fine. Uh, I mean, on transport, I, I mean, I, I'd like to hear from Keith Brown, not just about the fourth crossing, but, but lots of other transport, because uh, partic I am particularly interested I in... But well, we can ask him about all his responsibilities. Yeah, because, so. I mean, we've got rail links, and I mean, yes. I, uh, although I live in the city, I do uh, like going out of the city, and uh, rail and road, you know, I've got a lot of issues I can start raising with them. So uh, I think it would be wider. I would see it as being wider anyway than just uh, the bridge itself. And, uh, I mean, on your point about, I mean, if we are going away during recess, uh, I, as a, somebody who lives in the central belt, I'm more than happy to spend two or three days away um, if we want to go to a more remote place, because uh, I think we should get out of the central belt, and um, this is an opportunity if it's during recess. Point taken. Uh, Peter, sorry, and then... Yeah, well, uh, thanks, uh, convener. I, I, I agree with much that's been said. I think uh, it is important that we get Keith Brown in front of this committee, because the rail link, for instance... The rail link, for instance, from uh, Aberdeen to, to Edinburgh is an important issue that we, we, we need some answers on, as well as the bridge. And obviously, uh, Fergus, Fergus Ewan needs to come and speak to us, and uh, we need an update on where we are in CAP payments, for instance. I also think it's a good idea to get out and about, so I, I, I reflect that uh, if, as well. 
Um, so, uh, you know, uh, much of what's been said, I, I think, is, is the correct way forward, and I agree with what you're saying, uh, that we need to, we need to get our, our own thoughts into the, into the clerk of the committee, and, uh, and then we can move forward. Sorry. Yes. I thought you were going down the line. Um, I, I didn't, I, I, no one else caught my eye. If they want to speak, yeah, just okay. catch my eye. I, yeah. I certainly agree with uh, John Mason, and, and I think you know, Keith come along to do uh, talk about the bridge, but I also have a major infrastructure situation in M M74 in my uh, constituency, so I've got quite a number of questions that I'd like to ask in regards to that also. Perfect. That's within his responsibility, so that would be fine. Emma. Um, as I'm thinking about declarations of interest, I am now Fergus Hughes' parliamentary liaison officer, so I suppose it's relevant that I declare that, I just remembered that. And also, in my area, we do have major connectivity that needs to be looked at, roads, rail, broadband, it's everything that a rural area needs help with. So I would urge us to explore that. Thank you. I, sorry, if I can go to Jamie. Yeah. I think I'll echo, echo what Emma said. Um, it, I think maybe it would be helpful if we were able to define what uh, areas the uh, committee will actually cover. Specifically, I mean, connectivity is more than just broadband, uh, roads, rail, it's uh, ferries. It, it could encompass a whole wide range of subject matters. And for that reason, that may encroach on a wide range of ministers or cabinet secretaries. So I think maybe mapping up those areas of responsibility that the committee will have with the relevant ministers, that'd be a nice exercise to have. And then around the room, uh, you know, each of us will have interest maybe in one or, or more areas of that. So I think I would find that very helpful if we were able to define what the objectives of the committee would be over the course of the session. Thank you. John. Yeah, just for the avoidance of doubt, convener, of course I'm not suggesting the largest infrastructure project isn't the subject of detailed scrutiny by this committee. What I was suggesting was that uh, I doubt we're going to learn terribly much in the fortnight between having had a full ministerial statement with the opportunity to everyone. But I think it's very important that we do hear from uh, Mr Brown and, and like John I'm very keen that we, we have a, a focus on rail and the opportunities associate with particularly the limitations as Peter alludes to with some of the, the infrastructure there but also our ferry infrastructure as well. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I mean, I broadly agree with everything that's been said so far. We've all got different interests, and that's what makes this committee so interesting. Um, I think that we definitely do need to define the role in the remit of what we're actually responsible for, because not only will we cross over ministers, there's also some crossover with other committees as well. So I think we also need to discuss how we're going to interact with those other committees and, uh, and how we're all going to work together in that. Okay. Um, anyone... Any other comments? Can, can I just say on that that I, I actually agree totally that this, the remit of this committee could be so big that we could be completely lost in it. And I think it would be a very good opportunity for the uh, clerks to get together and draw out a map of all our responsibilities. I think then at a later date the committee should, should actually consider where we interact with other committees and look to see if there's some joint working that we can do with other committees to make sure that the specific, specific areas that are relevant to us but also relevant to them are covered. Mm -hmm. So that would be something that I think we could legitimately ask uh, the clerks to do for us and to bring it up. I very much take the point that you've all made about getting out, about early planning and also about uh, making sure that uh, we, we take note of everyone's interests and those very much will be on the work agenda and we will be back in touch, the clerking team and myself, to try and make that work for everyone. I think there is broad agreement that uh, calling both uh, the cabinet secretary and, or both cabinet secretaries in relation to the infrastructure project of the fourth bridge and any other questions that want to be raised and also Fergus Ewing to regarding farm payments and any other business that wants to be raised would it be appropriate at the next committee meeting. So uh, I believe we're agreed on that unless I hear any, oh well, are we agreed on that? Agreed. Okay. okay. Uh, sorry, um, if the, given that it's in two weeks time, um, what your process, what you'd like the process to be for submission of questions in advance to the ministers to give them time to adequately research and respond or 
Uh, so, for example, very sp you may have a very specific issue about a, a piece, patch of road or a specific rail line or a specific bridge. I think each of us may have individual points to, to ask them on the day what the process should be for submitting those. Sorry, can I, can I just, just slightly help you with that? The, my, my understanding is that, that, and it's right that members of the committee can ask any question that they specifically want, but the clerks will help with some questions on topical issues that they think may assist us uh, in, in putting questions to the Minister, but it shouldn't be limited to that. It should be li the members should ask the questions that they think are important and relevant. Sorry. No, I was not yes, this idea. Uh, just, just rather obviously, if it's a relatively local issue, it may be helpful to a member who wishes to raise it if the Minister is aware that it's going to be raised. But that, I think, is a matter between the member and the minister rather than the ministry for the committee. Mm -hmm. um, because if you want an answer on a local issue. I think I th the one thing I would say is it, it, I think we're going to be quite short of time on, on that, that committee day. So I think the, the bigger issues are the ones we should be concentrating on. But you will determine what the big issues are. Convener, given that uh, we've now concluded we wish two cabinet secretaries here, and I assume if it's possible for them to be here, it would be two separate sessions. Will we be considering an earlier start than? We, 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 we're still to actually work out right. timings that they're available. So once we've got timings that they're available, what we'll do is we will come back to you and let you know the timings. And we want to have a pre-meeting prior to the, uh, them coming in. So uh, we, we'll come back to you as soon as we know. I think uh, that concludes the business uh, of today's committee meeting. So I'd like to close the first meeting and uh, look forward to seeing you at the next meeting on the 29th. Thank you very much, everyone, for being here.